Kiss Kids 2021. We have got an action-packed episode for you as you are taking part, yes you, in the Focus Kids Olympics. Now, this may not have been what we expected our Focus Kids to look like this year, but I know we've got an action-packed weekend planned for you here on this episode and also in your churches at home. My name is Sarah and I'm going to be taking you through our Focus Kids Olympics as we've got a very special event. We've got the most extravagant egg and spoon race you've ever seen coming up very shortly so keep your eyes peeled for that and we have got something really exciting as lots of different churches around the network have been taking part in some interesting olympic sports let's take a tour of the country and see how they got on Well, this is setting up to be the best Olympic Games we have ever seen and we are so excited for this Focus Kids weekend. Now, one of my favourite parts of Focus Kids is when we worship together and to worship, we need to make sure our hearts are warmed up, ready to worship God. We also need to make sure that our bodies are warmed up because we love dancing here at Focus Kids. So I think we need to do a warm up worthy of the Olympians. So I've got some Olympians here to help me. Here they come. And what a welcome, what an intro. So we are going to do a warm up together, make sure you are joining in at home. So we're going to start by stretching to the ceiling, stretching really tall, and we're going to see if we can touch our toes. Oh, these guys are very good at that. And we're going to do five star jumps. Are you ready? In three, two, one, go. Very good, very good, very good. And amazing. So we're going to do a strike of victory pose. What's your victory pose? I think it's like this. Yeah, maybe. Oh, very good. And now we're going to do one big jump where every child across the whole network is going to jump at the same time. Are you ready? So we've got to bend our knees. We're going to do the biggest jump. The whole country is going to be jumping together in three, two, one. Whoa! Let's go into worship. Ready, set, let's go. Ready, set, let's run.
Hey sports fans, welcome back to the Olympic Village and I've got a special treat for you as we are meeting the one that everyone has been talking about, the person they can't get enough of, it's Eggy McSpooner. Eggy McSpooner has been training for the most intense, the most extravagant event that we could have at our Olympic Games. It is the Egg and Spoon Race. How are you feeling today, Eggy McSpooner? I'm feeling okay. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a big game today. It's a big competition and it's my first time, so I'm feeling, feeling quite nervous, but it's going to be okay. We've been preparing, haven't we? I've got my coach with me. Yes, we know you've been training really hard. Tell us a bit about that training regime. I mean, guys, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been early mornings, late nights, you name it, we've been doing it. It's been a long routine. But I feel like we've got this, haven't we? we have I've got, got, this. I've got my coach got behind this. me. Yes, we have. We've got Coach Yoke. Oh, um, Coach Yoke, um, no, this is my mic. Um, yes, I am Coach Yoke. I am Eggy Mitspina's coach. And I just want to say, we are going to win this Games, actually. So you listen to me through those lens right there. I am a six-time world champion. She's going to be a champion. This game is ours. See you on the court. Thank you for that lovely interruption, Coach Yoke. So I can see here, Eggie McSpooner, you're feeling very nervous. It looks like you might have cracked under the pressure a bit. I mean, I mean, what if I can't do this? I mean, everyone's expecting me to win. What, what, if, what if I crack under the pressure? You, could, you might let the, the, a lot of fans are hoping for you, cheering you on. We don't want to let them down. I really, really don't. I've got a case of the shakes here, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a live TV broadcast. What are you doing here? Oh we are your biggest fans and we've come all the way from Edinburgh to see you! Um, Please can you sign my spoon? Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is a live TV interview. Um Okay, we might need an ambulance over there, but um, Eggy McSpooner, it looks like you've got a lot of people cheering you on. They seem very excited. I've got my fans, I've got my Eggy McSpooner, I've got my coach. What more can I want? I've got a whole team. I'm ready for this, guys. Well, I'm going to smash it. Well, you've got the whole country behind you, and we are really excited to see how you do. Back to you in the studio. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren, and I have a question for you. Have you ever played in a game or run a race or even been in a play and had somebody in the crowd cheering you on? Come on, Lauren, you can do it. Go on, Gil. Imagine it. You're about to go onto the pitch or the track or even the stage and you're feeling a bit nervous. Oh, it's a big moment. But then you look out into the crowd and there you see a familiar face with a huge smile and waving at you. Oh, it's a great feeling to know that you have someone out there cheering you on, right? That's it! You're ready! You got this! Woo! We met a new friend earlier, Eggie McSpooner, as she was preparing for her race. Oh, she was pretty nervous, wasn't she? I mean, it was the Olympics. It's only the greatest competition of all time. I wonder if you noticed what helped calm her nerves. Yeah, when she realised that she had her coach by her side, cheering her on and supporting her. And when she saw those super fans who came dressed up and travelled from far away just to come and see her race. It made all the difference to her, knowing that she had those people supporting her. Did you know that the Bible talks about our lives as a great big race? Not the sack race or the 100 metres or anything like that. No, although you were probably pretty good at those at your school sports day. No, Hebrews 12 says that we have a race marked out for us to run. That our lives, God has planned them to have a beginning, a middle and a finish line. But the thing is, as we live each day, as we run that race, sometimes we come across stuff that gets in the way of it. Maybe it's stuff that makes us feel sad or upset or worried, along with all the happy stuff that happens. Maybe it's even a virus that stops us from seeing our friends. Hebrews 12 says, We have many people of faith around us. Their lives tell us what faith means. So let us run the race that is before us and never give up. Thank goodness the Bible is full of good advice, right? And help so we know what to do. That verse tells us that one of the things that will help us run our race is to see other people who have run theirs already or are a bit further ahead. In fact, if we flip back a chapter to Hebrews chapter 11, we will see an entire list of people who lived incredible lives of faith and ran their race so close to God. Hey, I'm Noah. 
I built a massive boat. Everyone thought I was crazy, but God asked me to, so I did it. Let my people go. Hey, I'm Moses. I love the people out of slavery, even though I didn't think I was a leader. But God asked me to, and I trusted him. Hey, I'm Rahab, and I protected God's people, even though it was dangerous. I did it because I knew that God was the one true God, and I trusted him. And it's not just people in the Bible that we can look to as examples. I bet you can think of people right now that you know that are helping you run your race and live your life close to God. They're showing you how by living their lives and running their race. It might be a family member, or it might be a friend or someone at church, your kids group leader. For me, it's the people that I work with every day. Each one of those people are cheering you on. They want you to know God for yourself and run your race, live your life so close to God. Oh, isn't it amazing that God gave you those people? Why don't we say thank you to God right now for them? If you'd like to, you can close your eyes. And why don't you picture in your mind, in that place that you imagine things, picture those people. Maybe you wanna just choose one or a couple of people that show you how to live your life for God. In that place that you're thinking of them, God can see. Why don't you show him who they are? Tell him what you love most about them, what you're grateful for. You might just wanna say, thank you, God, for, and then say their name. You could do it out loud, or you can just do it in your head. Later on, you might want to thank them and let them know how grateful you are for them. You could draw them a picture, you could write them a letter or a card, or you could just say a great big loud thank you the next time you see them. Thank you God for all the people that you've given us that show us how to run our race for you and show us how to be champions in your kingdom. Amen.
got this Eggie McSpooner, you can win. You've got all your fans who are cheering you on. You've been prepping for this. You know what you're doing. You've got it. You can do it. Uh, Ms McSpooner, four minutes to win and join the start line. Things were just getting in my way. Well, don't worry, you haven't missed the race. Just follow me. Oh my goodness, I'm so stressed. Eggie McSpooner's gonna be late for her race. She just kept getting distracted. Her stuff kept getting in the way. She got trapped in the changing rooms. She got distracted by snacks. Fair. She got mobbed by fans. Oh, I really hope she makes it. I wanna see how she does. You know, all this reminds me of a verse in the Bible. Actually, it's a verse before the one we looked at earlier. It talks about how stuff can get in our way of running our race. Let's see what it says. So, let us run the race before us and never give up. We should remove from our lives anything that would get in the way. We should remove the sin that so easily catches us. Let us look only to Jesus. Hmm, well, I wonder what that could mean. Do you remember that we talked about how the Bible says that our lives are like a race? Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't run my race the way that I should. I don't live my life the way that God asks me to. I get stuff wrong, I mess up and I make bad choices. That's called sin. You might have heard that word before. The Bible tells us that sin gets in the way and it stops us living our best lives. It tells us that we should remove it, throw it far away. Well, God had a plan for that too, thank goodness. He knows that it's not that easy for us to live our lives the right way the whole time. He knows that it's easy for us to get distracted or to make a bad choice or a wrong decision. So that's why he gave us Jesus. Yep, Jesus. Jesus is the perfect example of how to run our race and live our lives. If Jesus was at the Olympics, he would have won gold at every event. Except, maybe not swimming. <gasps> Oi, you, no walking on water. God tells us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, to keep looking to Jesus to be our example every day. When we're faced with a choice, we can think, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus act? What would Jesus say? And that can help us run our race and live our lives the best way we can. But you know, Jesus didn't just come to earth to be a good example for us. No, he came for an even better reason. Remember when I said that we needed to have, find a way for our sin to be taken far away? That is what Jesus came for. Because when he came and when he died on the cross, Jesus took all that stuff onto him, the stuff that we do wrong, and he took it far away, so far away that it, we will never see it. And because of that, we get to be so close to God. Our races as we run them will be with God right there with us. Isn't that incredible? Right now, why don't we chat to God and say sorry for some of that stuff that we do that gets in the way, that sin that we talked about? If you'd like to, you could put your hands over your heart like this. And I want you to imagine some of those things that you might wanna say sorry for. Imagine them as a ball, maybe like a big scrunched up bit of paper. Imagine it and then imagine that you are holding onto it with your hands. Just in this moment, why don't you say sorry to God? Out loud or in your head. And then, 
I'm going to count to three and we're going to throw it as far away as we can. Are you ready? One, two, three. All that stuff is gone forever. God promises to forgive us and to be with us always. Isn't that incredible? God, thank you that when we say sorry to you, you always forgive us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to take all that stuff out of the way so that we can run our race and live our lives close to you. Show us how to live, God. Please help us, come be with us and remind us of how much you love us. Help us to be your champions. God, would you come and fill us up with your love right now. Send your Holy Spirit to come and live in our hearts and to help us to run our race. You might like to hold your hands out in front of you right now, like you're getting ready to be given something. We're just gonna be quiet for a moment and ask God, fill us up with your love. Hello sports fans and welcome back for the final night of our Focus Olympics and it is the event you have all been waiting for. It is the extravagant Egg and Spoon race. We've been following the journey of Eggie McSpooner and we will see whether she really does crack under the pressure. Now let me explain this event to you as it may not be the simple Egg and Spoon race that you're expecting. What our competitors need to do today is they need to see how many times they can stand up and sit down whilst balancing their egg on their spoon. How do you think they're going to do it? They've got 30 seconds to see who can get the highest score, but if they drop their egg, their egg, their score goes back to zero. Let's go to the event now. Okay, so we are live at the Olympic Stadium for the moment everyone has been waiting for, the ultimate egg and spoon race. Eggie McSpooner is looking strong in lane one and she is ready to take down her competitors. We've got a nod for the adjudicator, we're ready to go. Okay, and they are off, and Eggie McSpooner is looking strong. A flawless technique that the others could barely keep up with. They're all looking a bit scrambled now. Oh, we've had a few eggs already cracked. They're cracking under the pressure, but Eggie McSpooner is remaining strong. She's hard-boiled and focused at this event. She's ready, she's been training for this. She's got the crowd cheering her on. Are you cheering at home? Oh, we're so excited. We're getting into the final countdown now. And Eggy McSpooner is our champion. We are all so proud of her. She's worked so hard. Oh my goodness, what an event. That was so exciting. And now we are going to challenge you to an extravagant event where we want you to take, it, take on this challenge in your churches, at homes. So take part by seeing how many times you can stand up and sit down whilst balancing an egg on a spoon. Can you beat Eggie McSpooner? We are so proud of her as she takes to the podium and we can celebrate that she has won the Olympic Games. And that is all we've got time for with our Focus Olympics. We are so glad that you came and joined us here today. And whatever you're doing with your churches around the country, we want you to remember that you are God's champion, that you have a crowd of people cheering you on and that you are so extravagantly loved. Remember that, remember that you are a world changer and we are very excited to see you at Focus 2022. We'll see you later, bye.